Mehmed, how are you? Are you there, Mehmed? I think no one wants to talk. I guess. <laughs> So just make sure that you have a working microphone for class because it is very important that everyone has the ability to participate. I'm here. Yay! There you are. How are you? I am fine. So just make Good. sure that you have a working microphone for class because it oh. is very important that everyone has the have ability to participate. Do you have two windows open? Yay! There you are. How are you? Uh -oh. Do you have two windows open, Mehmed? You have an echo. Usually that means there are two windows open. Yes, yes. Okay, close close the one that you are not in. Oh. You have an echo. I I have a small problem. Usually that means there are two windows open. Yes. Yes, yes, <laughs> it's open. Okay, close. close so one. funny. <laughs> okay. Uh, now it's done. Let's see. Yes. Uh, oh. Yes. Good. 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 Now we're good. Excellent. Excellent. Good job. Good job. <laughs> okay. All right. I think we're good. All right, guys. Um, le <laughs> let's go ahead and get started. So for those of you who don't know me, my name is Shanae. I am from the United States. Um, I live in California. And um, today we are going to read a story called Queer. Um, from the novel uh, Winesburg, Ohio. So on what's today Wednesday. So on Friday we read the first page, but we're just gonna reread the first page today. So we're gonna start at the beginning of this story. So if you haven't um, read it yet or whatnot, don't worry about it because we're gonna start from the beginning. Um, this is an advanced class. So um, make sure that um, that you are an advanced student so that you can get as much as possible out of this class and learn a lot. Um, let's go around the room real quick and have everyone introduce themselves. So just say your name and where you're from and uh, something about yourself. And um, Cosmo, we'll start with you. Hi, everybody. Hi, sir. I'm from China. I'm very glad to learn with you. Yay. Good. Good, good. And um, Elisa? <laughs> Are you there, Elisa? May I introduce myself, ma'am? Let's see. All right. I don't.
don't think Elisa has a working microphone. So I'm going to go ahead and um, block her. And that way somebody else, if everyone else blocks her, that means somebody else can come in and take her spot. Um, Jose, can you go ahead and introduce yourself? Okay. Hi, Shine. Hi, everybody. My name is Jose. I'm from Peru. And usually I attend the classes later. But now I have some hours free, so that's why I'm attending this class now. Excellent. Thank you. Very good. And uh, Mamed? Oh, uh, I'm from Bulgaria, uh, Europe. Uh, and I am. Eight, 18 years old. Uh, I study now mm, and I try to learn English. Good, excellent, very good. And you said you're from Bulgaria? What? You're from Bulgaria? Yes, yes. Excellent, very good, very cool. And Noir? Okay, hi, hi everybody. I am Noor, I am 24 years old, I am graduated from College of Education, I am, I am from Iraq, I live in Baghdad. Ah, cool, very good. And uh, Pankaj? Yes, ma'am? Would you like to introduce uh, yourself? Yes, ma'am. Uh, good evening, ma'am. Uh, my name is Pankaj Kumar Patel. I am from India and uh, now I am uh, uh, working in a stock market company and uh, that's all from my side and anything would you like to know? That's good, that's good, very good, glad to see you. And uh, Raham? Yes, hi, hi everyone, uh, this is Raham, uh, I am from Sudan but now I live in Saudi Arabia. And uh, I joined this class to um, prove my pronunciation. Um, I have to uh, I speak, you know, I want to speak English fluent fluently. So, fluently? Uh -huh. Yeah. Yeah, I hope so. Awesome. Very good. And Slim? Hello. Hi, Janine. Hi, everybody. I'm Slim. I'm from Tunisia. I'm 26 years old. And I'm trying to learn English. All right. Awesome. And then is it Farhad? Hey, teacher. Hi. How, hi. How are you doing today? I'm good. How are you? Uh, not too bad. Thank you. Good. Would you like to introduce yourself to everyone? Sure. Uh, so my name is Farhad Ali, and I'm from Pakistan, and um, I'm a student Anything uh, would you like to know? What are you studying? Oh, I'm studying uh, English in a, a major these days, uh, but uh, I used to study um, uh, science is, uh, is a major, but not uh, uh, now because you know I I wanted to take the IELTS exam, mm -hmm. uh, so I just I am prepare myself for this exam. So after that, when I just uh, uh, got, uh, when I just get my required uh, band in the IELTS exam, so then after that I will um, uh, uh, I will apply to the uh, foreign country for my higher education and then I will begin my major subject again. Excellent, excellent. Any particular place you want to study? Yeah, this uh, I wanted to study in uh, Australia. Australia, very cool. Very cool, awesome. Well, welcome to all of you. So, um, like I said, this is an advanced reading course. So we are, we have been reading um, a book by the name of Winesburg, Ohio, um, by Sherwood Anderson. And we've been working on this now for quite some time, um, for quite a few months. But 
you don't have to have been in this class before to enjoy um, because this novel is full of short stories. So um, since it's full of short stories, you can jump in in the middle and um, know all about it. So that is what we are going to be doing today. Um, the book was published in 1919, so it's quite old. Um, it takes place, so the novel takes place right after the Civil War in the U.S. So it takes place even long before it was published. So um, think, kind of get that in your brain as we read. Um, today we're going to be reading the story Queer. And a long time ago, the word queer, what the word queer, it is slang. Queer is slang for somebody who is homosexual. But that's not what this is about. Um, no, yeah, that's not what it's about, Cosmo. That's slang. Queer actually means strange. That's actually what it really technically means. So this is about a gentleman who is strange. He's weird. He's just like a lot of the other characters that we've met in this novel. So um, his name is Elmer Cowley. Elmer Cowley. And let me give you the link to the text. So there's the link to the text. And basically, we're just going to go through and we're going to read a, as much of this story as we can and um, talk about the characters and the plot. And so basically, what we concentrate on here is reading comprehension and um, literary analysis with some bonus skills, obviously, being reading fluency pronunciation, and vocabulary. So these are all the things that we try to cover in this class. So Cosmo, I'm going to start with you. Okay. And I'm going to have you read the first two paragraphs of this story. Okay. Um, from his seat on a box in the rough board shed, that stuck like a bird on on the rear of Collie and Sam's store in Winsburg. Emmer Collie, the junior member of the film, could see through a dirty window into the print shop of the Winsburg Eagle. Elmer was putting new show sh show laces in his shoes. They. Did, they did not go in readily, and he had to take the shoes off with the shoes in his hand. He sat looking at a large hole in the hair of one of his stockings. Then looking quickly up, he saw George Willard, the only newspaper reporter in Winsburg, standing at the back door of the Eagle print shop and staring absent absentmindedly yeah absentmindedly absentmindedly about where where wh uh, what next what, uh, what what next exclaimed the young man with the uh, shoes in his hand jumping to his feet and uh, creeping away from the window a flush creep into Elmer Cully's face and his hands began to tremble. In Cully and Son's store, a Jewish traveling salesman stood by the counter talking to his father. He imagined the reporter could hear what was being said and the thought made him furious. With one of the shoes were still held in his hand, he stood in a corner of the shed and stamped with a uh, stocking foot upon the border floor. Good. Okay. So <clears throat> this story opens with Elmer Cowley 
And what is he doing? What is Elmer Cowley doing? It's in the first paragraph. <laughs> Can I try? Say that again. Can I try? Yeah, please. Okay. Elmer was putting new show lists. In his, in his shoes. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, he's putting new shoelaces in his shoes. Are they going, is, is he having an easy time with this? He's a ju uh, ju uh, junior? He's, yeah, he's, he's the junior member of, of the firm, which basically he just means that he is, he's the son he is the son of the store owner. Uh -huh. Yeah, he is the son of the store owner. Are his shoelaces going in his shoes easily? No. Yeah, no, no, they're not. And um, took off his shoes. Say that again. That's that's why he took off his shoes to to do it with in in hand. Yeah. Yes, exactly. He has to end up taking his shoes off in order to get the shoelaces in. Who is he watching as he's doing this? One of his talking. George Willard? Yes, exactly. Yes. He is he is watching George Willard through the window. What does George Willard do for a living? It's a, a newspaper reporter. Yes, exactly. George Willard is the newspaper reporter. Oh, and good. he's watching him through the window. And yeah. then we see that he starts to get kind of angry. We see the text tells us that a flush a flush is a red color. A, a flush crept into Elmer Cowley's face, and his hands began to tremble. And his hands began to tremble. Who is in the store talking to his dad? Uh, a Jewish traveling salesman. Yes, exactly. And once we see this, then Elmer starts to imagine something. What does he imagine? Someone mute himself. <laughs> what is he imagining? And who is he imagining? He imagined about? by the reporter. He imagined by the. Yes. What does he imagine about the reporter? Remember, the reporter is George Willard. Teacher, sorry, but I can't hear my voice back. So. Okay. Um, Mehmed still ha yeah Mehmed still has a has an echo. So okay, go ahead, Raham. Okay. So what does he, he imagine about, about, about George? He uh, okay, go ahead. Okay. Um. Uh, the imagine by the uh, the he, the reporter that he could hear what being said that he he become furious. Yes, he imagines that George can hear the conversation between the salesman and his father uh -huh. okay. and it makes him mad or in fact it makes him more than mad and it makes him angry and getting yeah. yeah it makes him furious so he's standing there with a shoe in his hand imagining this and he's very angry and he basically throws kind of a tantrum like a little 
little kid and start stamping his foot and shaking his hand with the shoe in his hand. So yeah. we can already kind of see that this guy is a little strange. He's a little not, you know, not all there, so to speak. Um, Farhad, can I get you to read the next two paragraphs for me? <clears throat> yeah, uh, yeah, teacher, okay. So, um, Kali and, uh, uh, shall I begin, teacher? Yes, please. Okay, Kali Ka and Sun store didn't face the main street of Wensburg. The front was a Miami street and beyond it was Waggett Waggett wagon shop and sheet for sheltering a farmer farmer uh, farmers horses beside the store an alleyway uh, ran uh, behind the main street stores and all day dress uh, and de delivery wagons intent on bringing in and taking out good fast up and down the store itself was and this and describe and describable well uh, hang Henderson once said of uh, it that it sold everything and nothing and uh, and the and the window facing Miami Street stood up a chunk of coil as large as apple burial to indicate that others for coil were taken and beside the black mass of the coil uh, stood three combs of honey uh, grown brown and dirty and their wooden wooden uh, frames. The honey had stood in the store uh, window for six months. It was for sales and were also the co the coat hangers uh, patent uh, suspender buttons, um, cans of uh, roof uh, paint, bottles of uh, rheumatism care, care uh, and uh, substitute for coffee, substitute for coffee that uh, company Companion, companion, yeah, companion, companion. The honey and the patient willingness to serve the public. Good. Okay. So these two paragraphs tell us a little bit more about the store. Where is the store located? In Mommy Street. And. And. Yes. Um, the front, the front of the store, the front of the store is on Malmi Street. Is this store on the main street of Winesburg? Uh huh. Yeah. No. No. No, 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 it is not. Yes, no, it's not. Yeah, exactly. So this store is not in the best location. And they talk about, the texts tell us that the store itself was indescribable. In fact, one man, Will Henderson, says that it sold everything and nothing. What do you think that means? It sold everything and nothing. Um, I think that uh, it's mean that uh, uh, sometime it's opportunity to uh, people come to buy something uh, while the other time uh, the customer uh, do not come. You're close. You're very close. 
basically what the what it means is the store has a lot of different items for sale but it is not a successful store because nobody ever shops there so you can see this because you can the text tells us that we have honey that has sat in the window for, for six, six yeah for six months and we also have some other things um, that that are listed that are sold in the store that we get the impression have been there for quite some time so this store is not a successful one it is not a successful one at all um, Mehmed, can you yeah. read the next two paragraphs for me? Uh, yes. Teacher, um, yeah. yes. What's the meaning of chunk? Of I'm sorry. Chunk of chunk of coal. Oh, a chunk of coal is like a big piece of coal. Okay, big piece. Okay. Sure. Yeah, a big Thank piece. You. Uh huh. No problem. Why why sometimes my uh, page uh, is not clear and sometimes I can I can't read it. Um, it's because of your connection, unfortunately. Maybe maybe for that. Now I can read. Okay. Uh, Ebenz, Ebenezer Coley, the man who stood in the store listening to the. The eager patter of words that fell from the lips of the traveling man was tau was tau and learn and look at now again I can look at unwashed on his scrawny neck was a watch when partitionally Partially. Yep, partially. Now again, I... Use use yeah. the link. Use the link instead, Mehmed. That way it should be yes. clearer for you. No. Where is this link? It's in the chat box. Oh. Okay. Okay, you're in the wrong chat, Mehmed. If you look at Colingo, if you look on the left hand side, of your screen, you'll see where it says chat, screen share, capture, and Colingo. Yeah. You need to be on the one that says Colingo. Yes. Oh, yeah, now I'll go. I still see you in the wrong chat. Yes. So, hold on one second. I, I, I must to use Chrome, Chrome. Are you using Google Chrome? No, I'm now. I'm not using it. You're not using Chrome. Now I. I using I'm using Windows. Yes, what now, are you using? Now I will go Internet Explorer. Oh yeah, that's probably why it's not working for you. But now I will go in the Chrome. Okay. I will go in the Chrome. 
there's, I, okay. <laughs> All right. Um, Elias, how are you today? I'm doing well. Thank Good. You. Excellent. Excellent, excellent. Okay. Um, can I get you to read for me, perhaps? Yes, why not? Excellent. Perfect. Let me have you read these last two paragraphs of this page. Starting with Ebenezer Cowley. Okay. Ebenezer Cowley, the man who st stood in the store listening to the eager patter of words that fell from the lips of the traveling man, was tall and lean and looked to and wished on his scary neck was a large, when practically covered by a gray beard, who wrote a long Prince Albert coat. The coat has been purchased to serve as a wedding garment. Before the, he became a merchant, Ebenezer was a farmer, and after his marriage, he wrote the Prince Albert coat to church on Sundays and Saturday afternoons. When he came into the town to trade, when he saw the farm to become a merchant, he wrote the coat constantly. He had become brown with age and was covered with those coat, but in it even Ebenezer always felt the dust up and ready for the day in town. As a merchant, Ebenezer was not happily placed in life, as he had not been happily placed as a farmer. Till he existed, his family cons consisting of a daughter named Nabal, and the son lived with him in, in the room above the store, and it, it, didn't not, it did not cost them much to live. His troubles were not financial, of his unhappiness as a merchant lay in the face in the fact that when, he, uh, when a traveling man with, with wares to be sold came in at the front door, he was afraid. Behind the counter he stood shaking his head, he was afraid first that he would still boldly refuse to buy and thus lost the opportunity to sell again. Second, that he would not to be stubborn enough world and would in a moment of weakness buy what could not be sold. Good, very good. Okay, so Ebenezer Cowley. Ebenezer Cowley is the father of Elmer. So Ebenezer is the father of Elmer. And he's also quite strange. What does he wear all the time? Prince Albert coat? Mm-hmm. Yeah, he wears a Prince Albert coat. What did he originally buy the coat for? When he came into town to trade? That was that was sometimes, but he originally purchased the coat for what? When he married. When he married. Yes, exactly. He bought it for when he got married, and after that, he began wearing it on weekends. Now, mm -hmm. he wears it all the time, and mm -hmm. it has become brown and dirty. But he always wears the coat anyway. Is this a happy man? No, he is not happy. No, he, he is not happy. What did he do before he was a merchant? Mm. What was his job before he was a merchant? Farmer. Um, yeah, he was a farmer. Exactly. And besides having his son, Elmer, who else is in his family? Again? Mabel, his daughter. Yes, Mabel, his daughter. Uh huh. And um, what is his problem? He has a problem, and it's not money per se. Yeah, but, it's not financial. Yes. Yeah, his troubles are not financial. But what are what is his, where do his troubles come from? His unhappiness as a merchant. Say that again. Yeah. His unhappiness. Yes. Why is he why is he unhappy as a merchant? He missed his uh, his life, his past life, I mean. 
No, 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 no. <laughs> He's afraid of something. What's he afraid of? Well, when he traveling, man, that the the man who's traveling and he he fell from the lips a bad word. Yes, like this. Yeah. So basically, what he's afraid of is when people come to when a traveling salesman comes to the store to try to sell him something. He sometimes is very strong. He is very stubborn, and he refuses to buy whatever it is the person sells. Mm -hmm. And this makes him frightened because he feels that if he doesn't buy whatever the traveling salesman is selling, then he will lose an opportunity to make money and sell. However, at the same time, he is afraid that if he buys what the man is selling, he will lose money because his shop is not very successful. Basically, this is a very long way of saying he is a bad businessman. <laughs> he is a very bad businessman. He's not good at this. He doesn't yes. know. It's He's not good at knowing what to buy, what not to buy, um, that sort of thing. So he's not very good at his job. And this is what, and he, he knows this, and this is what makes him unhappy. Uh, teacher, I want to ask you a question. Sure. Of uh, course. Opportunity to share again, does that mean um, he, uh, Ebenezer, uh, he buy the, the, the product that a tra travel man tried to sell to him, and uh, he uh, wanted to sell this Sell this, sell this to another in his shop. Um, let's see. Um, yes. First, that he would stubbornly refuse. Well, he's afraid that if he doesn't buy what the traveling man is selling, then he will lose an opportunity to sell that item to somebody in his shop. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. I, I yep. got it. Got it. Okay. Good. 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 <clears throat> Teacher, uh, uh -huh. what's the meaning? Uh, what does a scrawny mean? What does it mean, scrawny? Scrawny. Scrawny. Yeah. Scrawny is like small, skinny, not very healthy. If you're scrawny, you're like really thin and probably aren't very healthy. Um, small bones. Yeah. Okay, mm -hmm. thin, but thin person. Thin. Yeah, mostly yes, a thin person. But more than just thin, it's someone yeah, who's weak. Um, not just thin, but thin and weak and lean. And lean. Uh huh. Yep. Mhm. Mm yes. Okay. Okay. Thank you. No problem. Um, is it my wish? Am I saying that right? My wish? Yes, I'm my yes? wish. Hi, how are you? Uh, hi. I'm fine, and what about you? I'm good, I'm good. And where are you from, my wish? I'm from Pakistan. From Pakistan, awesome. Would you like to read for us? Yeah, sure. Awesome. Which paragraph? Okay. Um, we're actually we're on the second page, the top of the second page. Um, if you want to read the first two paragraphs, in the store. Yep. This is the first line. Yep. Okay. Okay, I'm right. Uh, in the store on the morning when Elmer Corney saw the garage Willard standing and apparently listening at the back door of the Agile 
print shop. A situation had arised that always stride the sun's worth. The traveling man talked, and Aben Zer listened. His whole figure experiences uh, uncertainly. You see how quickly it is done," said the traveling man, who had for sale a small flat met mental substitute for plural buttons. With one hand, he quickly unfastened a collar from his shirt and then fastened it on again. He awesome a flanterian wheel dealing tone. I tell you what, men have come to the end of all these fluing with collar buttons. And you are the man to make money out of the change that is coming. I am offering you the exclusive agency for this stone. Take twenty dozen of these fast tenors, and I will not visit any other stores. I will leave the field to you. The traveling man lay lean. Over the counter and tapped with his finger on Abizar's breast. It is opportunity, and I want you to take it. He, your a friend of mine, told me about you. See the man, Glory. He said he's live one. Good. So what we're seeing here is the salesman giving his what we would call a sales pitch to Ebenezer. And what is he selling? Fascinated robot. Say that again. Fascinated. I can't say. Fastener? Um, a fastener? Fastener? Yes. Yeah, yes. A, fa yeah a fastener. Yeah, he's fastener. selling uh, fasteners for um, a collar, for a shirt collar. And so that's what he's selling, and he's telling him, if you buy this, if you buy this, I won't sell it to anybody else. Yes. That's, that's his sales pitch. That's his goal to try to get Ebenezer to buy it. And um, he even yes. says that a friend of his has told him about him. That he, yes. you know, he says, a friend of mine told me about you. See that man, Cowley, he said he's a live one. So what he's trying to do is he is trying to build Ebenezer's ego to try to make this sell. This is a sales tactic that people still use to this very day. People still do this. So this is nothing new. Um... Raham, can I have you read, let me have you read the next three paragraphs. Okay, sure. The traveling man pushed and waited, taking a book from his pocket. He began, he began writing out the order. Still holding the show in his hand, Elmer Cowley went through his store, the store, but to absorb it, a man to glass showcase near the front door. He took cheap revolver from the case and began to wave, wave it about. You get out of here, he, uh, he shrieked. When shrieked, uh -huh. one, shrieked. He shrieked. shrieked. Uh -huh. uh, we don't want any color fas fastener here. An idea came to him. Mine, I'm not making any threat, he added. I don't say I will shoot. Maybe I just took his gun out of the case to look at it. But you better go out. Yes, sir, I will say that. You better grab your things and get out. The young uh, uh, storekeeper's voice rose to a scream, and going behind the counter, he began to advance upon the two men. We're through being fools here, he cried. We, we ain't going to buy any more stuff until we begin to sell. We ain't going to keep on being cured and have folks staring and listening. You get out of here. 
the traveling man left wrapping the symbol of color fastener of the counter into black leather bag. He ran. He was a small man and very bull legged and he ran a, a weak world worldly. Awkwardly. The black uh -huh. Okay. The black bag caught again at the door and he stumbled and fell. Crazy that what is his crazy? He as Peter and he arose from the sidewalk and hurry away. Good. Okay, so um, Elmer kind of flips out a little bit and he flips out on the salesman and he is preventing his father from buying these collar fasteners. And what's his reasoning for this? Why does he not want to buy these? Why doesn't he want his father to buy these? He don't want it? <laughs> yeah, he doesn't, but there's a reason why. Why does he not want the collar fasteners? Anybody? He was afraid that uh, he would try to shoot the uh, somebody. Look at the second paragraph. Why does he not want to buy these? Um, I think, uh, I think, um, because uh, they have folks staring and listening. Uh, you're a little bit ahead. They end up going to buy any more stuff until they began to sell. Yes, exactly, yes. They aren't going to buy, this guy, Elmer says that they aren't going to buy anything else because nothing is selling in the store. And his whole point is, is why would they buy anything when they can't sell anything? And he, he's very aware that people look at them and think, wow, this is a really strange, weird family. So they don't he he doesn't want people to think that of his family anymore. So he refuses to buy this. And he really scares the you know what out of the traveling guy so bad that he falls as he is trying to get out of the store. Why do you think this guy is so scared of Elmer? What does Elmer do to make him afraid? What does Elmer do to make him so afraid? Um, he took a, a cheap gun. Yeah, yeah, exactly. He grabs a gun and starts waving a gun at the guy. I don't know about you, but if somebody starts waving a gun at me, I don't think I would be too excited to stick around. Um, Slim, can you read the last paragraph of this page for me? In the store, Elmer Cowley, Cowley, and Cowley, his uh -huh. fellows, okay, I have uh, written from uh, my page. <laughs> Not Say that again. I will try to read from the my screen, not from the screen. In the store of Elmer Coley and his father started at each other. Now, but the immediate object of uh, his wealth had fled. The younger man was embarrassed. Well, I mean it. I think we have been queer long enough. 
he declared going to uh, showcases and replacing the revolver. Sitting on a barrel, he pulled on and fastened the shoes he had been holding in his hand. He was waiting for some word of understanding from his father, but when Ebenezer spoke his word, only served to reawaken the wealth in the sun and the young man ran out of the store without the light. Scratching his glee, beard uh, with the, his long dirty finger, the mansion looked at his son with the, the same wavering and certain stare with which he had confronted the traveling man. I will be stretched, he said soft, softly. Well, well, uh, I will be washed on and in your ironed and stretched. Uh huh. I'll be washed and ironed and starched. Uh huh. Okay, so after this uh, salesman leaves the store, Elmer and his dad are sitting there staring at one another. And um, even though the young man is embarrassed, he defends what he has done. He tells his dad, well, I meant it. I think we've been queer long enough. He's telling his dad, you know, people look at us, dad, like we're really weird. And I'm sick of it. So I mean what I said. And um, then he sits um, on a barrel and fastens the shoe that he'd been holding in his hand. So apparently he finally got the shoelaces in. And he was waiting for his dad to say, you know, you're right, son, you did the right thing. But instead, his dad is very baffled. Baffled means he doesn't understand. He's very confused. He's very confused at what his son has just done. And he uses this expression... Um, I'll be starched, he said softly. Well, well, I'll be washed and ironed and starched. So he's using this expression to basically just explain how flabbergasted, there's a word for you. Let me type it. Flabbergasted. That basically means amazed and confused all at the same time. And he's totally flabbergasted at what his son has done. Astonished, uh-huh, yeah, that's another good word, Slim. Absolutely, absolutely. Does anybody have any vocabulary questions? We only have about four minutes left. Are there any unfamiliar vocabulary words that you would like me to go over? Uh, teacher, uh, what yes. does um, uh, serve to reawaken the worth in the song? What does, does this sentence mean? I don't understand the road of Ooh. worth. Where, what paragraph are you looking at, Cosmo? The, the last paragraph, if you last count. Paragraph. From the bottom, one, two, three, four, five. The five, the five, the fifth line, count from the the bottom. Oh, his his words only serve to reawaken the wrath. Okay, what this means? Um, I'll yeah, wrath is anger. Yeah, wrath is anger. Good, Ahmed. Yeah. So what this is saying, what this sentence means is that when Ebenezer, when his father says stuff to him. Whatever his father says to him does not make him feel better. All it does is make him more mad. So basically, just when Elmer is starting to calm down and his dad says, you know, well, I'll be washed and ironed and starched, this just makes Elmer ten times more mad than he already was before. To reawaken something, uh, to reawaken means to bring it out again. Okay, reawaken um, to bring 
something out again. So if he's re if by his words he's reawakening the wrath in his son, he is serving to bring this anger that maybe has started to go away. By what he says, he's bringing that anger back. Does that make um, sense? Yes. Thank you. Okay. Um, no problem. I, I just think um, I I couldn't under understand this situation because um, the the son uh, just uh, threatened out the 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 salesman, and I want mm -hmm. uh, the understanding of the father, but the, but uh, his father. Um, I don't know. Yeah, uh, didn't understand. Yeah. It, so basically, what's going on here is the where the son and the father are not seeing eye to eye. Have you ever heard that expression? To see eye to eye. To see eye to eye means that you have complete understanding and you agree. You agree with the, with this with the situation. Elmer is having this thought in his head that he's, he's sick of the town looking at him and his father as unsuccessful, poor business people, and he wants it to stop. So Elmer's solution to this, um, which isn't necessarily a great solution, but his solution to this is to scare the bejesus out of a salesman and his father on the other hand doesn't seem to see or recognize the town's feelings about his family and doesn't seem to recognize where they're going wrong as business people and this is very frustrating to his son and so this is where um, this is where they're not having a complete understanding with one another. Does that make, yeah, yeah, make sense? Uh, okay. Yeah, if, um, if uh, Emmer Cully uh, just, uh, he wants to break the, the 